I start now, I will mute myself. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon, Oliver. Um, quick check, where are you calling in from? Uh, at the moment, I'm in Turkey. Oh, in Turkey, Hi. Istanbul. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, interesting. Um, I, my last, actually my last flight or my last holiday was in Istanbul, but that was in 2020, February. Hmm. So how is the situation in Istanbul? Actually, the situation in Turkey now is very calm. The government has lifted all restrictions, so everything hmm. works normal. So even bars and clubs and everything, restaurants are open like usually. But so what, no what is the vaccination the rate uh, for the citizens? Uh, actually, there are not too many vaccinations, but it seems like um, the country got the situation under control. Mm -hmm. And I've been personally speaking to many hospitals here, and also they have not reported any deaths. Oh, so okay. yes, there were people who had uh, COVID here, but uh, most of them had like a, a mild version. Maybe right. it seems that uh, the stream that we have here is not, um, not a deadly one, um, but I think the situation here is good in control at the moment. That's why they lifted the restrictions and allow life as usual. Yeah, I guess uh, in many places, um, this COVID thing has become endemic, uh, which means we, we have to just live with it like any normal flu or dengue, right? So um, I'm yeah. calling in from Singapore and, and uh, uh, Gary, if, of course, in, in Hong Kong. Uh, Singapore situation is uh, pretty much under control. I mean, a, a small nation but uh, i think la yesterday we had about three cases so uh, mm -hmm. life is going back to almost normal uh, you know, everybody just have to live with it like just be uh, you know more careful so anyway um thank you so much for uh, you know uh, your spending your afternoon with us uh, we actually do a lot of uh, the podcast with our members especially the new ones just to get um, you know, a little bit uh, more intimate with them, uh, really knowing them as a person instead of just a LinkedIn profile, uh, which, you know, all of us have many LinkedIn friends, but uh, not everyone uh, on LinkedIn, you know, you have actually spoken to. So um, yes. Asia CEO, we try our best. We can't, we can't do every podcast, you know, like for all our thousands of members, but we do uh, invite those who are keen uh, to do a podcast with us, especially those from overseas. Like in Hong Kong, we are still able to do uh, events, which Gary is organizing. Mm -hmm. But our foreign uh, members, uh, you know, we probably don't have a chance to visit them. So I think Zoom makes it, you know, viable for us to at least have a virtual face-to-face -face chat. So we, we have 30 minutes. Um, so I'm going to ask you questions about... Um, you know, a little bit personally about yourself and then uh, business that you're in or the industry that you're in. And then what, what do you look for, um, you know, maybe the outlook in your particular industry and how can Asia CEO actually help you with that? So maybe just start with a little bit about yourself. I read your profile, of course, um, that you are also in uh, very much into crypto, blockchain, and also gaming. So, um, I would like to start with, uh, uh, I guess, the industry that a little bit more familiar, uh, which is esports and gaming. So yes. tell us, how did you get into that? Yeah, actually, um, I was in the esports industry before the word uh, esports even came, came up. Out. Okay. Um, in the year 2000. Wow. My first venture was uh, renting out game servers to clans right. in Germany. Okay. And at this time, there were like, I think zero competitors. So we were kind of a monopolist on the market mm -hmm. and we were the only company to offer gaming services to our customers in that time. Um, in America, there were some, uh, some um, providers, mm -hmm. and, but we were the first in Germany. And for some two years, we were leading in Germany, had uh, most customers. And after we sold uh, the company to a bigger provider. Right, right. And, and are you still in the eSports space now? Well, no, no. no. Um, now my kids are in the eSports. <laughs> <laughs> so our biggest yeah. son is a top 500 Overwatch player. Wow, interesting. I mean, you know, look at eSports. Um, some maybe, uh, I think, you know, we're probably um, the same era. I'm not going to mention my age. But those days, you know, uh, there wasn't uh, the, the word eSports, right? There were arcades. There were video games. 
at least, uh, you know, I played the Mario's, the Nintendo's, um, and I used to go to arcade to play video games. And I recall, uh, you know, my mom saying that, you know, if you play too much games, you're going to, you know, probably do very badly in your study. You're not going to get a good job. Therefore, you have no future. But in those days, there wasn't a career path. There wasn't an industry for esports. But today, like any other sports, uh, you know, golf and tennis, right? Um, there's a proper ecosystem, right? So that kids, you know, that is interested in this uh, field has a, a path that they could follow, right? So I'm, I'm glad to, to know that you're one of those parents that is, uh, you know, very supportive and have your kids, uh, you know, venture into things that they like. So, so you have, you're the, really the pioneer of esports to say. So what, what is uh, keeping you busy right now? Which industry is, is uh, are you like, you know, watching? Definitely crypto. Crypto. <laughs> Yes, and this from the morning to evening, it keeps even uh, our kids uh, busy. So our daughter, which is mm -hmm. eight years old, mm -hmm. she comes sometimes down and asks, not how are you today, but she asks, how's the price of Bitcoin today? Oh, wow, you got her started early. <laughs> yes. If an eight-year-old can understand Bitcoin, right, and, and crypto, right? Um, yes. I've always liked to ask people to explain Bitcoin blockchain because every time I ask, you know, they always give me very different uh, answers. So if you can explain to your daughter, um, you mm. know, do you mind sharing with us, right? How would you describe blockchain crypto and, and what do you see the market as? Because I have some Bitcoin, I bought it earlier, but you know, the last couple of months, it seems to drop a bit. Like yes. I knew about it, but wasn't an expert. So maybe some of our yes. audience and some of our members, uh, I think they, they would probably be uh, keen to hear from an expert like you. About the drop in the prices recently? Um, yeah, just, you know, how would you explain to someone who, who has no knowledge about cryptocurrency? Maybe right. we start. So we'll get I, I just opinion. start um, this with uh, another question. Uh, do you know actually how your online banking works? Yes. Most likely... Um, most likely you don't know the technical details of, yes, of how it works, right? right. So when people say, um, I cannot um, work with Bitcoin, I cannot understand it or everything works, it's very complicated. And actually the question is, do you need to understand it? So what you'd need to understand, for example, in our app or mm -hmm. in our platform, um, mm -hmm. if you want to buy and sell cryptocurrency, it's mm -hmm. the same like online banking. You right. just log in, you create your profile and you have a button to buy or sell Bitcoin. So and how it works behind that, how the blockchain works, it's not really the concern of the retail clients today. The same as it's not, for well, how does the SEPA or SWIFT networks work? You don't know that in detail, but you don't know, you don't need to know it. So for now, of course, many people um, said that everybody needs to understand it, but these were more the tech savvy people that pushed Bitcoin mm. in the beginning. Yes. But I think when it hits the masses and that's what's happening now, it's not so important anymore. You can have Bitcoin and you don't need to understand how it works. You just have a share of Bitcoin and you can follow maybe the price and you're happy if it goes up, less happy yes, if it correct, goes a little correct. bit of Actually, down. But that's the mass adoption. When you yes. stop thinking of how it works, but if yeah. you just use it, if you say, for example, uh, I pay someone with Bitcoin mm. and you just pay him, you don't care about how the transaction works on the blockchain or if there's any confirmation coming through. You just did a transfer. I, I transferred to you Bitcoin to pay for your services. So that's it. I think you, you're right in, in, in the way most of us, um, to me, it's like, okay, why I transact through banks, even my mom, my grandma, you know, they can trust through bank because they, they have this trust thing that the bank is there, physically is there. So I know that my bank going through in and out of this bank, physical bank is safe. But I think for Bitcoin or you know, uh, crypto, right? It was really the question of, even if I don't know how it works, you know, the back end, it's like, mm -hmm. can I trust it? Who is governing it? You know, the, the fact that it is not governed by anyone, you know, at least is, is, is a free, you know, uh, thing. So some of people are like, uh, are you sure it works? You know, what if, you know, I, I lose the, the key and, and my Bitcoin got stuck? Uh, and things like that. So, but sometimes yeah. you don't have to ask so much, right? <laughs> like even <laughs> blue chip stocks, you know, the stocks go up and down. 
you really do not know what's happening in the company. You basically just buy it, right? So you just I, I buy guess, and sell, yeah, and you correct. make profits exactly. in between. Exactly. And that's what many people do with Bitcoin as well. So <laughs> we see here, for example, in Turkey, mm -hmm. a lot of people, really a lot, if they yeah. see a, a naked trading view uh, app yes. open and we, we are looking for prices, yeah. they know directly, ah, you're trading Bitcoin. What coins do you have? Can you yes. recommend something? What altcoins? And most people can show you some portfolio of uh, yes. coins that they have and they ask you about the opinion if their coins will go up and down. So right. here the atmosphere in Turkey for crypto is really vibrant, I would say. Mm. And people are embracing it because, yes, through COVID, the economy is a little bit suppressed at the moment, like everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. But people search for new ways how to make money. And uh, they have found out that with trading coins, they can actually make money on a daily basis Correct. without Correct. even leaving their house. And people love it. Yeah. And, and of course, you know, uh, trading in, in many forms, commodity, stocks and all this. But, you know, Bitcoin is... is um, I use Binance in, in, in this part of the world and it's, it's mm -hmm. actually pretty easy to use uh, for simple trading. Then, of course, they have those, uh, you know, more complicated ones for the, you know, expert. But I'm just watching my, my Bitcoins every day. So coming back to the question of the drop, right? For mm -hmm. the last couple of months, you see the, you know, uh, the coins go up because someone someone tweeted something and then coins go down because someone tweeted it, right? So the right. question is that, is it, you know, um, the up and down or the sentiment of the market, right? It's, it's so fluid that it, it is affected by just one celebrity or one, you know, so-called Elon Musk who tweeted it, right? So yes. in that sense, do you think it's, it's a good thing or is it something that, I mean, for retail investors, it's like, oh my God, because he said something. And yes, you know, of course, these guys. Unfortunately, unfortunately, yeah. still uh, some single people have the power to influence yes. the market. Yes. And the question is, yes, of course, they have the power, but they should be also responsible about how they use it. Uh, they should Correct. not exactly. uh, create damage uh, to, especially the retail users that yes. maybe invest yeah. their little savings in it. That's not really fair. Yeah, because because at the end of the day, we all know that this is a, a game of uh, pushing. The price down so that bigger ones can buy cheaper so yes. we, we all know that and that's what's happening all the time so but after a period of suppression you can see always big buyers coming in, come, buying right? buying so buying the, and the big the big holders they always have more in their wallets afterwards and the new holders they go home empty because they panicked and just sold at a yeah, very I'm low lost. price yes so so like you know um i always say of course investment is always risk, right? Unless you, you put in your fixed deposit. But sometimes, you know, uh, if you want more risk, of course, more gain. But in, in trading like stocks, right? You, you at least, the blue chips, you've got some form of governance and you've got like, you know, at least there's, you know, uh, watchdog and all this, right? So like for Bitcoin, I, I personally feel like, you know, um, really for the retail investors, it's really nothing... Uh, you can do. I don't know. I've, I, I've been reading about reviews and all this, but um, perhaps you need a little bit more time before the, the market gets a bit more matured and some form of control. Um, my I next question... Users yeah. have to get more used to it mm -hmm. and then they should stop panicking. So whenever mm -hmm. there's a news coming out, they should not, just should react, not react and jump on the news. Yes. Because in reality, if you just hold on to your Bitcoin, nothing will happen. Yes, the price may drop for a time, yes. maybe even for a week, maybe even for a month. But the price is coming back up. And you, yes. should, you should just forget for about the fiat term, value right? behind. Because in reality, we all know that the, actually the fiat currencies are the unstable ones. Yes. They're just printed uh, with a lot of paper and getting yes. more and more. So... Someone, someone, uh, you know, there was this uh, NFT uh, news out of Singapore that someone just bought an NFT for like over 60 million of sort. And yes. then he, the guy also gave an interview and said that, oh, you know, actually the bubble is actually not the, the, the crypto, but the fiat. Because fiat, you can, you know, government can print and print. So one day, yes. you know, to buy a toothbrush, I need like two luggages of, the, you know, paper money. But That's because correct. crypto is some somehow limited and you know is yes. much more expensive or more difficult to mint 
one coin. Therefore, right, there, there's some form of governance in that sense because you really like some some countries, right? All you need is a printing machine, and you yes. can really print print. So, so that's I totally correct, actually, and and you know it. <laughs> that that instead that of also, printing paper, we have the coins which have a limited supply, and yeah. by time this got less and less. And even the new coins, like if you look at coins that incinerate yeah. themselves. So for example, there's a tax. Whenever you transact with the coins, then the coins get less. So you pay like a tax. And sometimes it's even redistributed to the holders of the, the coins. So the ones that have, they get more and more. Mm -hmm. And the ones that sell, they pay a little tax for selling it. So that means that the holders are being rewarded. Right, right. Which is actually a nice thing. Yeah, I, I think, you know, that statement actually uh, really got me thinking because, you know, we're, we're so used to fiat and, and, you know, but we know that in some countries, uh, the leaders really um, sort of, you know, uh, manipulated that printing machine in some way yes. also, right? So not enough money, just print. So, you know, coming back to um, the, the company that you started, Globians. Right. How long has it been? And, and you know, is the company operating uh, mainly in, in uh, the Europe part? Or, you know, are you operating, uh, you know, since it's a platform, I, was, I would think it's, it's actually worldwide. But I do realize that like Binance that we use here, um, some countries, they're not allowed to operate. Um, maybe yes. you, you want to share a little bit more about the company? Okay, so the project started in 2018. Mm -hmm. At first, we were very excited and thought that starting now, within a few months, we would have a running platform yeah. and we would already change the world and uh, replace fiat with crypto just like that. Yes, that was the idea, but uh, mm -hmm. we found out after only a few months that in reality, what we need is more a fusion of the banking, traditional banking and the crypto world. And that's what we worked on since then. And it took until... July 2019, until we had a working platform. So not uh, only the few months that I thought or that we thought earlier. Um, we had then our first license in Estonia. So we started from day one regulated. Mm -hmm. um, only KYC and KYB users that have passed through all the checks can trade on our platform. All right. Um, in June 2020, we then took over a major payment institution in Singapore and we extended our reach to Asia. Um, oh. We have now also platforms in Argentina, Brazil, and Australia, mm. which are in preparation and going to be launched soon, and a lot more coming. So at the moment, we are so on an you, expansion you, streak. You, you are already conquering Asia. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, um, we are also looking into Hong Kong and Thailand at the moment. So yes, we are definitely very interested uh, in Asia. Right, right. When and, you say, um, for example, uh, you took over a platform in Singapore, right? Was it, um, yes. I guess, because uh, this is a regulated uh, you know, industry. Um, mm -hmm. Taking over means um, you invest. We bought the company that was already um, exempted yes. under the new PSA, okay. PSA regulations I, in Singapore. Yes, I because see. nobody so far had a license back then. But I there see. were the companies that were uh, exempted. Okay, so, so does that region. mean that I can now buy through your platform instead of Binance? You can, yes, you can worldwide buy in our platforms, okay. wherever you want. Yes. Yeah, I'll text you. Uh, if you create, <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> now, if you create one user in our platform and you have passed through all the KYC checks, mm -hmm. then you can log into all the platforms that we have worldwide and trade on all of them. Right. And, and how does it work? Like, let's say I'm, a, I'm based in Singapore, so I would probably log in. And then when you say trade worldwide on different platforms, right? So let's say Bitcoin is Bitcoin. Does that mean that um, I can now have access to buyers and sellers from different parts of the world? That's just it, oh, right? Yes, you can. Um, well, we are in comparison to big exchanges because you mentioned them, Binance, we are quite small. So mm -hmm. we don't have the volume of our internal users like they have. Mm -hmm. And ex actually, at the moment, we are more focused on business users, not because we wanted uh, to have only business users, but that's the clientele that we got through personal connections and the businesses that we know, for example, from our time in Malta, there's a lot of providers that we know personally, big mm -hmm. enterprises that have big volumes and they trust us because we are licensed in Europe mm -hmm. and we were licensed from the start. 
but we will not have maybe the 50 million retail users um, this year that Binance has. Who knows what's coming in the future, but mm -hmm. um, it's, it turned out that we are more servicing businesses at the moment. So more B2B clientele. Yes. Okay, interesting. Well, I guess, you know, uh, in business, you, you probably want to play where your stronghold is. If you, you already started with uh, having a strong uh, trust in the business community, um, with limited resources, there's no point fighting the retail, you know, getting the 50 million. Because cost of acquisition sometimes for uh, B2C, uh, business can be quite expensive, right? I mean, right, yeah, I, I see it like this. Um, users. For us, sorry, yeah, yeah go ahead. For go us, ahead. Um, the, the retail users, they will, of course, also join our platform. We have retail users. Mm -hmm. Just today, they make a small uh, part of our volume. And right. I think because we don't have so much internal traffic, what is our strength is that we have um, to liquidity providers access to all the big exchanges. So we have over 20 liquidity sources. That means if user and you, for example, come to our platform, mm -hmm. you can still buy for the best prices because we have prices from over 20 different sources, including Binance, different exchanges mm -hmm. worldwide. So you don't just pull from one exchange. Right. Oh, wow. That means um, for the user, for example, right? For me, if, if I want to buy, when you say buy from the best price, as in, um, how how does it work? Like if, if I want to buy, the the platform will automatically uh, give me the best offer, or I have is it a bidding system? Like you know, yeah. uh, so bid, basically bid and ask price, right? You basically see a price mm -hmm. that you will get. So you okay. can see if you if you choose a currency, then you will see uh, just one price running in front of you. Mm -hmm. And this is actually the aggregation of many different platforms and many different providers. Right. So you see the price and whenever there's the price that you like, you just click on buy. It's very easy. You don't need to set any orders. You don't need to wait. You just watch the price whenever you like it. Mm -hmm. What you see is what you get. You just press the button and that's it. And then um, the business model for uh, uh, your, your company is basically for every transaction, you get a... Um, a, a transaction fees from the right, yes. both sides, the seller and the buyer, just like the no. In this in this case, we get from from the buyer because we are um, if we are selling to the liquidity providers, it means that we are uh, pulling liquidity through them. That means we don't have the internal trade. What right. I said, so it's not our internal order book, but we, but we pull it, um, external. We just take from you zero point one percent of the I trade. See. So uh, yes. there's no cap, so it's just a 0.1%. 0.1%. We have no deposit fees, so whatever money in, in fiat you transfer in, mm -hmm. there's, no, um, there's no punishment for that. <laughs> you can transfer all your money in. Okay. Um, we have a withdrawal fee of 0.5% for separate transfers, for example, depending on which banks you use. Mm -hmm. So I think our fee structure is quite fair. Right, right. And, and then what are the great plans for Asia? Like you, you've required, uh, when, when did this um, acquisition happen in Singapore? Was it recently? No, in June 2020, already oh, okay. last year. Last year. Yeah. Right. And what we have different um, from other platforms is that we have um, integrated IBAN accounts. So we provide you on an order page the possibility to order dedicated bank accounts. At the mm -hmm. moment, we have them from Europe, for example, okay. from Ireland, from France, from Spain, from Lithuania, and you can order such a dedicated um, bank account, which is integrated in the platform, so that you right. can also do your daily banking business through the platform. You will have your wallet, mm -hmm. like for example, Euro wallet, Singapore dollar wallet, mm -hmm. then you have Bitcoin, Ethereum, and you will also have your dedicated items that you ordered with us. You can also order cards. So basically the whole set of financial services you will have in one platform. And it's you don't have like to transfer. Bank? That's a digital bank, bank? yes. So yes. basically bank plus crypto exchange in yeah. one. Merge. Okay, because right now I have go to go to my DBS to do my other transaction and go to finance to do it. Not sure if the banks, because Singapore issued uh, their first five digital bank license, uh, but mm -hmm. it's still, uh, you know, uh, on the way. So I yes. guess that, that we would also be the future, ourselves. Right? We ourselves are also in the process of obtaining banking licenses around the globe mm. um, because we, we think it's a very good addition to our offer. 
Yeah. But we still will work with our partners in future. So we have uh, multiple partners that we sell the Iban accounts for integrated in our platform and we will do the same in the future mm -hmm. because we don't believe that only one bank is the solution for the customers, but we want to give you as many options as possible so all that right. you can get accounts from all over the world just in one platform. And you don't have to have like um, five different online bankings. You just have one access with us. You can mm -hmm. order your cards there. You can see all your accounts there. You can do all the business from one point. Well, I think that's, that'll be quite interesting uh, for our members. Um, you know, I, I will definitely discuss with, uh, you know, Gary to see that uh, maybe your, your uh, BD team or your tech team could actually do a workshop uh, to introduce the platform uh, to, sure. to our members. You know, it can be just a webinar, you know, introducing the platform and how easy it is to uh, download and, and, and subscribe, you know, because I think... Uh, Education is very important to me in, in everything we do, whether your product or services, especially when it comes to something new, right? You're changing people's uh, habit. Uh, it's always good to educate them first. Once they are educated, they don't have the fear, the mental block. Then it's about choosing which brand or which company to provide them with the service. So uh, if we don't go through the barrier, uh, the first barrier then you know just basically just selling product to them i think it doesn't work it's just like you know why do i need it is it safe you know <laughs> uh, that that's the common uh you know kind of um, human you know mental block that we all have right is this we're yes. so used to like you know touching the, the money increasing yeah, actually, money right <laughs> actually my next goal is to make my mother use our app yes um, I will meet her soon. She will come to visit us uh, in a few weeks. And mm -hmm. uh, my goal is to sign her up on our app and make yeah. her buy and sell cryptocurrencies so that yes. she can see that this is um, something which yeah. she can do as well. And if she will be happy and comfortable to use it, then I think the product is... Yeah, correct, correct. Because if not, it's, then it will just... It's ready for mass production. If, yeah, correct. You don't need to be a, you know, a computer science graduate to use the product, right? So if my mom can, you know, uh, I mean, like in China, you see, everyone uses WeChat. There's, there's even joke that, you know, if you, you know, there are like beggars on the road and, and you know, you don't donate physical money anymore. You just, you know, thief and then the money transfer, <laughs> right? So it right. probably can happen. You know, usually human beings, are, when they have no choice, uh, like during COVID uh, this time, people who are so scared of technology are forced to use it. I mean, you know, in this part of the world, like I, I'm from Malaysia, so we still have a lot of uh, people, you know, older people who are like, for example, hawkers, you know, people who sell stuff in night market. When, mm -hmm. when the stalls are closed, you know, um, you have no choice but to sell your fish and your, um, you know, vegetables, uh, Facebook online, you know. So mm -hmm. now they're pretty good at it and they're enjoying it. So in a way, I think this uh, pandemic also helped, um, you know, countries who are trying so hard to incentivize people to go digital or the nation. I mean, yes. Malaysia is Definitely. one that we, we are like, okay, please go digital. But people don't have the motivation. They don't see the need. But when they have no choice, too bad. Yes. Just do it or, you know, you, you, you perish. So in a way, I do, I try to see, you know, um, things in a more positive way with all this happening. There are some good things happen, you know, that, that sort of open up the window as well. Right. So, yes. No, I think the same. Definitely. Uh, I, I guess more people will have more time globally. to explore uh, Bitcoin. My, my last question would be like, there are so many different coins coming out every day. I, I just simply uh, couldn't keep track. But what, from, from um, what I learned from my friend who are like been in this since like almost, you know, the pioneer team, right? There seems to be two camps, right? The Bitcoin, the Ethereum, and then there are a mm -hmm. few others who are like far behind uh, that yes. is coming out, right? Um, if you say it's more... Is, is kind of difficult and, and limited, right? Like, how, 
how do people just create a coin by themselves? Can it, can Rina just have a Rina coin like one of day course, if I wish no to? No problem. And, and how it do I do that? It takes five minutes to create your coin. <laughs> five years? <laughs> five minutes. Five, five minutes. minutes. Okay. Yes. You can just fill an online form and create your coin within five minutes. And, and then what, and what do I need to do to make sure my coin is worth something? I need uh, 1,000 people to believe that my coin is worth something. Maybe 100,000 people, yes. 100,000. <laughs> 1,000 is not enough. Okay. So if okay. you can convince 100,000 people to buy your coin, you're on a very good way. But you should already <laughs> make up your mind what do you want to reach with the coin and why do you issue this coin? So there's a lot of the coins, uh, which people call shit coins. They yes, just do yes. nothing. They're just created a little bit pumped. Then the creators take money out, run away. And the people that uh, believe in it, it and they bought it, they lose all their money. So that's happening um, over and over again. Correct. But I have to tell you that for us, it's also kind of a team sport in our company and in also in our family mm -hmm. that we sometimes buy some coins, which we think they might be promising. Some small coins, sometimes we put like, I don't know, 100 euro, 500 euro, uh -huh. and just see what happens. Some of yeah. them, they did really well, mm -hmm. but as to be expected, the majority of them died. either goes Recipe like that or, <laughs> or never yeah. comes up again. Yeah, that happens. But yeah, so far we were quite lucky with some of the coins, okay. so it's good. So, so it's, your it's whole fun. family it's fun is... As well. <laughs> your whole family's like a dinner discussion would be like, how much is the coin, right? <laughs> yes, interesting. Family is very engaged in this yes. Interesting. I mean, and, for, the, uh, for the fact yes. that your daughter is asking you questions like this, right? Um, it shows how much you know technology has uh, uh, sort of affected you know our daily life, family life. Kids, kids, yes. know, yeah, kids are so savvy right now, right? They, they, they are really you know. I mean, imagine you and my me, eight years old. What, what will we be talking? You know, yeah, about football, eight, eight about years dolls. old, I was still playing outside a lot. Uh, with exactly. nine years, I got my first computer. So then things changed. Yeah. But with eight years old, I was still running in the woods or yeah. rivers, playing through the fields. Yeah. Right. Okay. A very different time, I would say. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think you know, uh, it, for me, you know, there's no best of both worlds. You. The, the more digital we are, I mean, we're supposed to be very connected, right? Digital, you know, Facebook connected. Everybody is like my long lost friend and all this. But mm -hmm. in a way, we also need to balance it because I think uh, nothing beats really a personal touch, a handshake, you know, um, and, and really being with someone, the energy is very different. Like now mm -hmm. is the sad thing is that uh, telephone booth disappeared. We all have phones, but my phone never rang, you know, because everybody is just texting. So I, yes, I'm sometimes longing true. for like, hey, how come nobody calls me? But everybody texts. <laughs> and you don't even know if, if the text is really human or robot, right? Because now, <laughs> you know, the bots are yes. answering your questions, right? So in a way, I think, you know, uh, good, definitely, but we're still human. I still believe that we, we need to balance both. Uh, you know, sometimes it's kind of sad to see, like when I go out, right? Families sitting together to supposed to eat dinner, but everybody's on the phone. So I, I or think maybe that texting one... to each other. Sitting exactly. On the same what do you want to eat? Ah? <laughs> <It can happen. laughs> no, no. I think that's bad. That's like too extreme. Right? That time for <laughs> yes. everything. But if that, I, I strongly think you know is is not necessary. Right. So anyway, um, you know, thank you so much for your time. Um. Oliver, uh, I, I don't know what time is Turkey right now. Uh, uh, at the moment, we have uh, 10 30. Uh, morning? A. Right? A. Okay, yes. okay, that's not too bad. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much Just for starting. your time. And, and uh, definitely, uh, let me speak to uh, Gary and see if we can uh, you know, organize a seminar for our interested uh, uh, members if they want to find sure. out more, especially now that you have opened up your Asia channel. Uh, I think some of our members are, you know, uh, in this space as well. At least uh, last two weeks ago when I had a conversation, one of them uh, uh, is in this space as well. So, um, again, keep safe and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you in Hong Kong some days. <laughs> I'm sure, sure you, you will travel Soon, to Asia, so. right? Uh, when, when yes, those, yes. When Within two, three months, we will be there. Okay, good, good. Over. Hopefully, uh, we can all gather for a nice Christmas. Uh, in Hong Kong. 
I wish Lai Hong Kong. Yes, definitely. Christmas. Christmas, we should be there. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, <laughs> Oliver. You take care. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Gary. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.